it's Wes. Welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about one of my secret weapons, the Canon EOS R and RF lens on the Ronin S. And I use this for handheld interviews. Right now the gimbal's off, so it's going to do whatever. But we're going to get into it, why I love this so much. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. In this video, I'm going to first describe the setup I've used, and then I'm going to go over the settings for each piece of gear, some of the key settings that you want to know, and share some samples along the way. All right, the first thing you, you'll want is the Canon EOS R. This camera is a workhorse. I've done other videos comparing it to the 5D Mark IV, why I chose it over the 5D, why I bought it in 2019 and again in 2020. And um, I use it for live stream. Uh, we use it for video production uh, in my school district job. I made a video, I'll link it up here. You can watch all that. This camera is reliable. It's amazing. So that's the first piece of gear that you're gonna wanna put your hands on for awesome handheld interviews. All right, and the second thing you're gonna need is a great lens. Now my choice, the one that I always reach for is the Canon RF 35 lens. It's light, it's sharp, it's an honor and a joy to reach for this lens to use for these handheld interviews. Um, I'll tell you some of the settings that I recommend on these on this lens, but just know this, because it's so light, it's easy to balance on the gimbal. Because it's light, it's easy to hold for handheld interviews. It is the way to go. And of course, it's sharp at f1.8, and we're gonna talk about some of the beauty that you get out of this lens and see some samples as we move on. All right, so third, you're gonna want the Ronin S, or there's the SC, which is uh, smaller and lighter, uh, but I use the S, and this gimbal is amazing. It works incredibly well. Um, it's heavy duty. It's actually a little bit heavy, so do your, uh, you know, lift your weights. Um, it's got a nice uh, tripod base. You can set it down. The Ronin S is the third part to this puzzle. All right, I'm talking into the Rode Wireless Go. This is the PhD resistance for me in terms of audio on the go. So um, you just put this on the subject like that. The wireless uh, receiver goes on top. Now, if you have two subjects, you can um, use a splitter and bring that audio signal into uh, from both receivers into the camera body and combine them. And we'll talk about settings as we go, but the Rode Wireless Go is my on-the-go solution for mobile handheld interviews. All right, so one, one thing I wanna talk about is the video settings, or actually the settings on all these pieces of gear. For video settings, um, I did all these interviews in 1080p, um, and so that eliminates the, eliminates the crop that you experience on the EOS R when you're filming in 4K. Um, I also always used the All Eye video codec. However, I've been experimenting with IPB. The samples you'll see are All Eye, but the IPB video codec gives you a smaller file size and you really can't tell the difference in terms of quality. So I recommend the, uh, the uh, IPB video codec going forward. That's what I've been using. Now, you also wanna film in, uh, have your shutter speed at one over 50 because you're filming in 24 frames per second. So double the frame rate, that's your shutter speed. At one over 50, then you want ISO as low as possible. So ISO 100 is a good setting. That's what I recommend. And I always, 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 shoot at f1.8 to get the beauty, uh, the bokeh and the blurred background that separates the subject uh, from the background on this lens. Now, one other thing I will tell you is shooting outdoors, I think all the samples you're gonna see are outdoor interviews, and I always had an ND filter. I'll put a link below to the one I like. It just happened to be one I ordered, but I've become very fond of it. It's super good uh, quality, it's a variable ND, and you can just dial in the exposure settings however best suits the picture uh, given the lighting conditions at the time. Now in these samples you'll see, I, I prefer to film in C-Log, so that's what you'll see. Um, I'll go over some of the color grading um, tips that I follow in uh, post-production. Um, but C-Log on, I have the camera set to autofocus eye tracking, and the Canon is amazing. So it's a workhorse in terms of that autofocus. You can trust it. Now the last thing about the lens in terms of settings, make sure you're on autofocus here, and turn that stabilizer on. The, F35, the RF 35 1.8 is a stabilized lens, and so take advantage of that feature. Don't sleep on this lens. It's probably the best RF lens out there for the money. All right, so some audio settings. So when bringing the Rode Wireless Go into the Canon EOS R, 
choose manual mode or manual sound adjustments. Shout out to Pablo from Buenos Dias Imagery. He turned me on to this. He's been on the camera right now. I'll put a link to his channel. And uh, the reason you wanna do that, there's a couple things. One, I lower the volume all the way down to like 25, 30%. You'll find it's, they're very, very sensitive. And that way you get nice, clean audio right here. You're not picking up a lot of extraneous noise. The other thing is when you set it to audio in moments between the subject speaking, what you'll find is the camera is looking for audio. So it tries to boost the signal and pull in what the subject is saying. But in a term, times of silence, it's just kind of pulling in extraneous noises, air conditioners, fans, traffic. So using manual helps keep the, the sound real stable. And then it also helps you adjust and fine tune for the speaker. Now, here's another tip for you is that when you have two subjects and you're bringing them in with a splitter into the Canon EOS R, make sure on the Rode Wireless Go, you can set a low, medium, and high sensitivity. Make sure they're the same and check because once it's in camera, it's very hard, very tricky to separate those audio, um, the speaker's audio. So um, that's my recommendation is make sure, double check, triple check, and make sure that there are the same sensitivity on the, uh, the Rode Go mics. And uh, it's, it's a winner every time, great audio. I'm gonna show you some samples and then we're gonna talk about the magic this setup creates. You could be one of the writers who helps out. And to support that is pretty amazing. I believe in that thoroughly. And what we do and how we do it uh, and how we integrate with the world outside of these doors. My name is Julia Chavez. I'm from Santa Ana, California and uh, Vegan by El Zamorano is my vegan Mexican restaurant. All right, now true confessions, I'm not a gimbal master, but I'll run you through basically what I do. I was taught by another person, Logan James, shout out to you. I'll put a link to his uh, Instagram. I think he's got YouTube as well. So right here, I balance this plane first and get that uh, set so that it doesn't tip forward or back. And then uh, I also keep a handle on this axis so it's not rotating uh, any other way. And once that's balanced, then I'll go for the um, getting it balanced, tipping this way. And that's with this adjustment here. And very last, I'll tip it up, make sure it's stable, tip it down, make sure it's stable. So those are the three axes. And that's the order in which I adjust them. Again, I'm not a gimbal master. This camera and, and lens is pretty easy to balance because it's so light. And so that's one of the reasons I like it. So pro tip on balancing the gimbal, make sure your mic is mounted on top because if you balance it, then add that weight you'll find that that actually throws the balance that you've already set up off and you'll have to readjust. I'm not uh, a gimbal master, like I said. My basic controls are right here. I use this little uh, thumb joystick as I'm uh, holding this in front and I just keep the, the lens focused on the subject. Very subtle movements, very slight pressure, uh, does the job for me. So I forgot to mention on the smartphone app for the, the Ronin, Make sure you do the calibrations. There's two things, kind of a calibration test and a fine tuning test. It only takes a minute or two and it helps dial in your mechanical settings with uh, the uh, kind of fine tuning or calibrating those motors internally so that they work to the best of their ability. That's an important step and I would be remiss if I left that out. So it might seem obvious to talk about movement because the, the Ronin allows for smooth camera movement. And what I like best about the 35 millimeter, there's a couple of things that come into play here. But one is I usually hold the camera uh, and the gimbal off to my right. My face is kind of aligned with the height of the lens and it makes for an easy interview so that the people feel like they're connecting with you, even though I've directed them to look into the lens most times. Um, but because I'm right there by the 35 mil lens is a very natural, organic feeling. Now, paired with that kind of distance or proximity to the subject, you have the ability to just give a little natural organic motion. I'm like, I'm pretending the gimbal's right here. Uh, actually, so as I'm speaking, I'm just moving the camera out and back a little bit, pressing in forward, pulling back, just to give it a sense that there's somebody Actually, what you're doing is you're fooling the viewer into putting themselves inside the video. That slight movement brings them in and it tells them, oh, there's a viewer, not just a tripod. And so that helps them connect because they, they kind of empathize with that movement, place themselves in the, in the camera movement to sense 
their proximity to the speaker and it helps create a more intimate setting. So that's uh, my tip is just a slight camera movement, nothing crazy, no orbits, nothing, no barrel rolls, just a little bit of natural movement. Um, that, that works for me. All right, so one of the things I wanna talk about with this lens is proximity. I might've mentioned it before, but because it's 35 millimeters, to get the person in frame, you are at a good distance for a natural human conversation. If I have an 85 mil on here, I'm gonna to have to stand 10 feet back to create the right framing and composition. And then I'm yelling uh, questions to my subject. That doesn't work at all. If I have a 10 mil, I'm up in your face and you look uh, fishbowled out anyway, um, but it's too close to, um, to have a, a good composition. Now there are exceptions to that, but I'm talking about a handheld mobile interview. And I think you'll agree with me, some of these samples really feel personal and intimate and make a good connection with the subject, with the beautiful bokeh that the, the RF35 f1.8 lens creates, the distance filming, which is something you don't really see, you just sense it. You sense that the interviewer is connected with the person that helps the viewer connect with the person as well. All right, in this scene, Pablo is actually up the hill. He's holding the camera up and elevation is one of the things I'm gonna talk about. When using the Ronin, um, you can hold it here, but if you just give it a little bit of elevation so the camera goes slightly downward, it kind of hides the, uh, the uh, neck with the chin and some shadows, um, you can give a really pleasing angle to your interview uh, subject by just adding a tiny bit of elevation. You don't want to go crazy, but uh, we kind of created this angle um, just to kind of accentuate the elevation that Pablo is filming from above me. Now I'm six foot four, so you can tell when I stand up, <laughs> there's a difference, but um, usually that, that height helps me create kind of a slightly uh, more pleasing angle on the subject. All right, it feels like we're playing a, <laughs> a carnival game here going up and down. Uh, but elevation, use it to your advantage. Stand on a chair and film downward if you um, need that, that support to get that, that right angle, just to make the subject look the best they can be. Now, I love to film outdoors, these interviews, if you can find quite enough space away from traffic and other distractions, I love to film in a natural setting. One, the, the RF35 lens, given enough space, will take those organic elements like the tree leaves and create a very soft, pleasing bokeh, blurred background. Um, also, I think that gives a sense of um, connection, uh, if you can use the organic elements, because there's gonna be some uh, trees moving in the wind and it gives a pleasant sense of peace and calm to the interview. That's an approach that I found very effective. So I recommend that. If you're able to film outside, film outside. The natural light is probably the best light you can get uh, aside from you know very expensive studio lights. I would recommend filming outside. All right, we're gonna wrap this up by me pouring out all the things I know about post-production. Now, if you film in C-Log, I'll go over quickly just what I do. I bring down the blacks or the shadows to about zero, right above zero. Then I boost the highlights to right under 100. This is very simple math, but you can put up your histogram, you can put up those video scopes. That's what I use when I'm talking about zero and 100. And then I drag down the mids a little bit just to give it a little bit more punch. That's it, that's really all I do to, to color grade C-Log. Um, I also might throw on an adjustment layer over the whole thing and add a LUT like Peter McKinnon's Kodak Killer. I've been using that a little bit lately turn the mix down to 10% or 20%. It just adds a tiny little pop of teal and orange that you almost don't notice, but it warms up the footage. But again, be very, very judicious. Use it very wisely, use it very minimally. So those are um, some color adjustments. Now, the adjustment layer goes over all the footage. I like to add a sharpening layer. You can throw that again uh, on top of that over all the footage and set it to like 10%, kind of see what you like, but I, I find that even though I love this lens and I rave about it, you'll see in the samples, sometimes even though the backgrounds are very blurry and soft, sometimes it feels a little soft uh, on the subject. So I like the, the sharpening to pull out the, you know, the, the hairline, the eyelashes, those kind of things, the smile. Um, and so I use a little bit of sharpening. And then if you like it, put a little vignette on that too. Again, mix it down 10, 20%, just to create a little of a spotlight effect on the speaker. And that's, that's really all the uh, post-production tips I have for these videos. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click like if you liked any part of this video. Also, subscribe if you're not subscribed. 
and uh, leave me a comment and let me know which tip you thought was surprising, confusing, uh, which tip you thought I overlooked for handheld mobile on the go interview magic. I love this lens, I love the Ronin, it's a good combo, don't forget the Rode Wireless Go. And most importantly, let's thank Pablo from uh, Buenos Dias Imagery because I forgot my lens and camera and he came through <laughs> with the loaner. And so he, he's out here filming, but he's also supplying me. It's like BDI rental house, I think is what we're calling it. <laughs> Money. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, it's, it's a little bit after sunset, it's blue hour. So we're gonna get out of here and uh, see you in the next video. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs>